father of life in you.
Victory is mine. 
to the mountains where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and death I
murito akuna ne munu muni angau ya akani kala che Akuna Angauya Atani kunja Kana Jesu Jesu ipo Akuna Angauya Atani kunja Kana Jesu Hakuna Angauya Akani kuda Oi niti doiba Doiba ne Jesus, 
Yeso wangu waone iminyari Oyo wangu dola imitenzi Imichi kwa cheupeyu Imichi mbele ukeyu Yeso wangu waone iminyari Oyo wangu dola imitenzi
Meso angu kuma tenga kwamuri se baba angu uvambi ne mukwa ni siwa jose musere ne titi. Yasha ne unyoro inosi muda meso angu kumatika kwamuri. Mbine mkwa nisi wajose Muzere ne titi Nyasha Ne uyo Tindo si muta 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 Say. 
Thank you, Father, for your presence. Thank you, Father, for your love. Forgive us, Heavenly Father, all our sins. And make us holy, even as you are holy. Cleanse us, Heavenly Father, that we be right in your sight. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yes, thank you. May take your sins. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Are you happy? Yes, we want to thank God for a wonderful time in his presence. The challenge with many of God's children is the world, you know, looking to the world. When your mind and your heart are focused on the worldly things, You will worry. You will be troubled at heart. This is why David says, you must not fret when the wicked succeed. You must not be envious of the wicked. But you must continue to look to God. In whatever situation you are, yet many are discouraged by their circumstances. When they go through challenges, they are disheartened. All because they compare themselves to those of the world. They've joined in the worldly competition where you always want to see yourself as better than others. You want good things to only come to you and not to anyone else. This is the challenge even in the church of God today, the body of Christ. There's envy, there's jealousy. When you see others succeeding, you are unhappy, all because you want it to happen to you. When you go through challenges, hardships, you are discouraged. You lose hope. Why? Because in your thinking, you want good things to only come to those who are right. Remember Job's wife. She expected good things to come their way. This is the reason why she said, curse God so that you may die. Because she saw the suffering of, his, of her husband. And she felt that it was better for the husband to die than to continue suffering in the body. Yet Job said, you speak like a foolish woman. Should we not receive bad things even as we receive good things from God? Meaning all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. For when you know that no matter the circumstances, they all work for your good. When you know that you rejoice, no matter what you may find yourself going through, no matter the circumstances of life, you will continue to rejoice. You will never be discouraged why? Because everything is working for your good. Everything, no matter the circumstances, no matter the hardships, the challenges, 
They are all working for your good. For remember, challenges are a blessing. For they are the fatal ground from which our faith grows. Unless we have challenges, insults, persecutions, rejections, we may never grow to know who God is. We may never draw closer to God. The reason why we draw closer to God, it is because of challenges. For when a little child faces challenges, they run to their father or their mother. They run to their father for refuge. Even so ourselves, the name of the Lord is a fortified tower. We run to it and we are safe. Those who are in the Lord. If you read Proverbs 18 from verse 10. So when you are faced with challenges, run to God. Find shelter, find refuge in the name of the Lord. For it is our fortified tower. Yet those of the world, they have put their trust in horses and chariots. But as for us, We put our trust in the name of the Lord. Now if you read Psalms 20 from verse 7. Never be discouraged on account of your circumstances. No matter what you are going through, you may have been one of the worst sinners, yet never be discouraged. There's one who died for you. His name is Jesus Christ, the atoning sacrifice, not only for those who believe, but even for those who are still in the world. This is the reason why we are told that we must not sin, but if we sin, we have an advocate in Christ Jesus, the righteous one. The atoning sacrifice for us and for the world. And if you read 1 John 2 from verse 1. So if you know that we have got an atoning sac sacrifice in Christ Jesus, you will not despair on account of challenges. You will not despair on account of hardships. You will not despair. You will not lose heart. You will never lose heart on account of challenges. Why? Because you are not alone. If you are one who is not alone, you will rejoice no matter the circumstances, no matter the hardships. You will never lose that. You will, not, you will never lose that. You will rejoice in every circumstance, in every challenge. Why? Because God Almighty is with you. God Almighty is with me. Never be discouraged. Never lose that. Be strong in the Lord and under his mighty power. For we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. This is the reason why we rely not on carnal weapons, but we rely on weapons that are heavenly. We do not wage war in the flesh, 
but our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. And through the same weapons, we bring every thought into the obedience of Christ Jesus. And if you read Ephesians 6 from verse 10, read also 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3. It requires trusting God with all your heart. For when you trust God with all your heart, you will never be moved by challenges, by hardships, by circumstances. You will look to God no matter what you are going through. You will rejoice in every circumstance knowing that God the mighty terrible warrior is with you and will go before you to level every mountain and to annihilate your enemies because he is God. That's why in the time of Deborah where we are told that from the heaven, the stars, they fought from their courses against Sisera. The river Kishon swept them away. And he said, March on my soul, be strong. Against all challenges, you must be strong. You must move on. The three judges, five from verse 20. Those who are strong in the Lord will never be moved by circumstances, will never be moved by challenges. Tell your neighbor, tell yourself, march on, my soul, be strong. In other words, he's saying, be strong and very courageous. Never be discouraged by any situation. Never allow your situation to discourage you. Men may insult you. Men may reject you. Men may persecute you. Yet God is always on your side. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for you and with you, who can be against us? Who are mere mortals? What, what can they do unto you? For those who are content, who look to God, trusting him in all that they do, they know that God said he will never forsake us. He will never abandon us. So if it be so, if God be our helper, what can mere mortals do unto us? Therefore, desist from the love of money and be content with that which you have so that you can live for God and God alone. And if you read Hebrews 13 from verse 5, the challenge with many is a little challenge there, a little hardship there, they are discouraged. Yet only those who stand firm to the end will be saved. For you must be hated by everyone. But if you stand firm to the very end, you will be saved. No matter the circumstances, no, no matter the hardships, no matter what you are going through, rejoice. Rejoice knowing that challenges are a blessing. Okay, let's go to uh, Matthew 10.
Let's read from verse. Um, let's read from verse twenty-one. It says, "Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved." Says you'll be hated by everyone because of me. But one who stands firm to the very end will be saved. For unless you are strong in the Lord, you cannot march on. For when you say march on, my soul, you are saying, even in the face of trouble, I must continue to run the rest set before me with perseverance. Looking always on Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. He who endured death on the, on the cross and he put the shame that comes with it, he put it to shame. You know, the case that comes by dying on the cross. Unless we look to Jesus, with a steadfastness of heart, we will give up. We will abandon the rest. When you are persecuted by your brothers, by your sisters, by your neighbors, you are bound to be discouraged. You will say, what is in it for being a Christian? For many look to good things for having been a, a Christian. This is the reason why you find many, after running a little while, when their earthly expectations are not met, they now stray from the, from the faith. They stray from the right path, seeking, you know, lies. Seeking what? Lies. For anything to do with the world is, is a lie. Anything to do with the world is a lie. For when you are one who runs to the world to seek, to know about the world, you want to know what is in it for you for next year, for tomorrow, and so on and so forth. You are worldly. You are worldly. For the solution to life is in the word. That's why the Lord says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Why would I want someone to tell me that you are going to have money when I've already been told what to do in order for money to follow? Why do I need someone to tell me that I'm going to have a house, a car, when I was already told in the word that I ought to do seeking the kingdom and is what? Righteousness. And all other things will follow. That's a guaranteed statement from the Father. Why do I need someone to tell me that you are going to have a child when God has already told me that if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything will follow. That which you require, which is worldly, will follow you. Why do you need to follow the world rather than wait for, for the world to follow? For those in Christ never lack anything good. For everything that is worldly will follow. For remember, everything that is in the world, they follow where the light is. You want money, be in Christ. Money will follow. You don't need anyone to tell you. If you get money without doing the right thing, that money is com not coming from God. It is coming from the evil one. Yet many are always running after worldly things and they want the kingdom of God to follow. For when you want the kingdom to follow, you are not different to the foolish one. 
who wanted to exalt himself above God. For it is only when you are in God that all other things must follow. In so doing, everything that is godly must take dominance in your life. For when you follow money, it means you are worshipping money. Everything of the world must follow those in Christ. For whatever you follow, that's your God. Remember, we ought to follow Christ. That's why he says, those who follow me will never walk in darkness, but they'll walk in everlasting life. Therefore, they will never stumble. For he says, I'm the light of the world. Follow him and you'll never walk in darkness. Never read John 8 from verse 12. Let the word of God dominate your life and let everything else follow. Yet many are discouraged because of, of what they see in this world. Because of the circumstances of this world. They are discouraged. They have lost hope. Never allow your circumstances to discourage you. Never allow the events that comes your way to discourage you. No matter what you are going through. For the Lord says, Blessed is he who is persecuted, who is insulted, whose name is rejected as evil because of the name of the Lord. It says when they reject you, when they insult you, persecute you, then you must rejoice. You must live for joy, for greater is your reward in heaven. For those of all, they did the same thing to the prophets. So when that happens to you, rejoice. Rejoice. When they hurt you, rejoice. When they insult you, rejoice. When they persecute you, rejoice. Yet it is very difficult for many to rejoice under those circumstances. You know, this is what we are told. Let's go to Luke. Luke 6. Let's read from verse 22. Say, blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you. You know, when they what? They exclude you. When you cannot fit in their companionship. When you find yourself being excluded, when they organize their own things, be it family gatherings, they exclude you. Count it joy. Count it what? Joy. For it was foretold that they will exclude you because of the name of the Lord. If indeed you are in the Lord, they will exclude you. He says, they will exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil. They will call you many times. They will call you names. They will what? Call you names. Ah, she's such and such, he's such and such, rejoice. He said, and reject your name as if because of this, the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how the ancestors treated the prophets. You may not see the rewards in this season that we are in. You may not see the, the rewards in this world, but surely your rewards are guaranteed in heaven. Continue to do right. Continue to run the race well. Continue to run the race well. For David says, my heart is in anguish within me. Says terror has fallen on me. Fear and trouble has beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. 
Oh, that I may have wings like a dove, that I may fly away and be at rest. Fly away into the desert. Fly away into the place of my shelter. Away from the tempest and the storm. Say, is, this, is that you? A mere man like me. If it were my enemy, I would have endured it. But it is you, my friend. My close friend. My companion. Whom I've walked with side by side in the congregation. Amongst worshippers. He says, we've walked side by what? By side. Challenges will never come from places that you don't expect. Challenges will not come from far away, but they will come from very close. Your close acquaintances. And if you read the Psalms, Psalms 55 from verse 4, and read also from verse 12. Challenges will come. Rejection will come. When rejection starts, it will not start anywhere else other than by those who are very close to you. Remember with the Lord, the first rejection was by his family. Remember his brother said, hey, no one who wants to be famous will uh, you know, just stay in closed doors. You must go out so that you Disciples may see what you are doing. Why did they say so? They wanted him to be killed. Okay, let's go to John, 5, John 7. It says, let's read from verse 1. After this, Jesus went around in Galilee. He did not want to go about in Judea. Because the Jewish leaders, they were looking for a way to kill him. But when Jewish festival of tabernacles was near, Jesus' brothers said to him, Jesus what? His brothers said to him, leave Galilee and go to Judea so that your disciples there may see the works you do. No one who wants to be, become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Even what? His brothers did not believe in him. So when you find yourself suffering rejection, count it all joy. Count it what? All joy. Don't be discouraged. Let it encourage you to move on. Move on, my soul. Be strong. Tell your neighbor, move on, my soul. Be strong. Say, march on, my soul. Be strong. For those who march are those engaged in war. For when you know that for you to win the war, you must engage in little battles. You must overcome those little battles in order for you to win the war. For there are many battles that we fight on a daily basis. Yet they all add up together for us to win the war. There are many challenges which are the battles that we fight. But we must never lose hope. We must never lose hope. Challenges must come your way. It was foretold that in the world there will be tribulation, but we must cheer up. Jesus Christ has overcome the world for us. He has done it already for you and for me. So there's no need for you to worry. For many may criticize you. They may reject you. They may exclude you on account of your stand in Christ. Even to the extent of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Never lose heart. March on. Be strong. March on and be strong. For many will blaspheme on things that they, they do not understand. 
you know, where they lack understanding, you find them blaspheming. What they don't understand, they call names. What they understand, they destroy. Such are men in this world. They are like unreasoning animals. Creatures of instincts. Born only to be caught and destroyed. Like animals, they will perish. They will also what? Perish. You know, 2 Peter 2 from verse 12. They are always seeking worldly things. When their expectations are not met, they are disgruntled. They cry. And they seek to destroy. That which they knowledge of, they destroy. That which they don't know, they call names. Such is the world that we are in. But you, child of God, let your let you, your soul march on. Never be discouraged. Be strong in the Lord. This is what Joshua was told. Be strong in the Lord. Be courageous. Do not be afraid of anything. Look to God always. For the challenge with many is it is so easy to comfort others. When you find others in trouble, you tell them the word. You preach to them. You cancel them. But when it happens to you, hey, <laughs> hey. Uh, it is easier for many to comfort others with the word of God. Yet when it happens to them, they never bring it to mind what God is saying concerning their situation. You hear, ah, it is well, my brother. It is well, my sister. Don't worry. God is in control. Why cannot that apply to you as well? As you comfort others, why not apply the word to yourself? For it is easier for you to empathize with others' challenges. But when it happens to you, it's a different thing altogether. Okay, let's go to Job 4. It says, from verse 1. Then Elipas, the Temite, replied, If someone ventures a word with you, will you be impatient? But who can keep from speaking? Think how you have instructed many. How you have strengthened feeble hands. Your words have supported those who stumbled. You have strengthened faltering knees. But now trouble comes to you and you are discouraged. Eh? Now trouble comes to you and you are discouraged. He says you have, you have strengthened many feeble hands. Weak knees you have strengthened. But when trouble comes to you, you are discouraged. Does that apply to you? To, to you? Do you see yourself there? Is this, is this a picture of you? For it is very easy for you to go to someone. Ah, don't worry. You know, Jesus, it is well, my brother. It is well. Keep shining. <laughs> but when it is you going through those challenges, you can hardly be comforted. So he's saying here, yeah, you have instructed many. How you have strengthened feeble hands. Your words have supported those who stumbled. You have strengthened faltering knees. But now trouble comes to you and you are discouraged. It strikes you and you are dismayed. Should not your piety be your confidence? In other words, should not your God be your confidence? And your blameless way is your hope. Consider now who being innocent has ever perished. Where were the upright ever destroyed? He's asking, 
the same question comes to you. For if you know that God means well in every situation, you rejoice. Knowing that nothing can ever destroy you. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. That's what the Lord says. Every tongue raised against you, that you shall rebuke. For that is the heritage of the righteous. That is the vindication of the righteous. Their inheritance forever. You know, if you read Isaiah 54 from verse 17. So when you know that no matter the circumstances, you will come out of it stronger. You will prevail. No matter the circumstance that you may find yourself in, you will prevail. Why? Because you are not alone. Why? Because God Almighty is on your side. Not only on your side, he is with you and you are in him. For lives are hidden with Christ in God. If you know that your life is hidden with Christ in God, you will not despair on account of challenges. You will never stray from the way of faith. On account of hardships. The reason why you see some of our brothers, sisters, you know, those, I will not mention them, those who, you know, line up their churches along the road, the highways, they know that when trouble visits, you will visit them. You know, when trouble visits, you will what? You will visit them. And they will put themselves where they can be seen. In order for you to go running to them. You know those? You know the ones that I'm talking about? Why? Because life in itself will always present challenges. If you be a child of God, you will always face challenges. It takes those who stand firm in the Lord. To never lose hope. Knowing what God has said concerning you. You will be able to stand firm. No matter the circumstances. You will be patient. You will wait upon the Lord. You will set your hope in the Lord. You will set your hope in the Lord. No matter what you may be going through. For he has taught us to pray, isn't it? Can we sing that song? I have a teacher, Holy Spirit of God, my holy unction, my comforter. Provider, I have a teacher, Holy Spirit of God, my only action, my comforter. Oh, I've been taught to ask, to knock, to say my Holy Spirit of God, a good friend of mine. I've been told to ask, to knock, to seek my ear. Holy Spirit of God, a good friend of mine. Yes, when I ask in prayer, I receive. Oh, we do Oh
assurance that whenever we ask God in prayer we will receive for those who ask God are those who believe in the son of the living God and when we knock the door is opened and when we seek we find for when we have that assurance, we can never be discouraged. We can never lose hope. For we are strengthened by the word of God. As we come to know who God is. For only those who know who God is can resist he who flatters. And, def and cause those who have defied the covenant to be corrupted. And if you read that book of Daniel 11 from verse 32. For when you know who God is, you will never be discouraged. You may do wrong, for remember, every wrongdoing is sin. For when you sin, you know where to run to. You can go run to God. We need to learn from David. Who despite all the sins that, that he committed, yet he always ran to God. Remember Psalm 51, where he approaches God and says, Lord, have mercy on me because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion. Blot out all my transgressions. It says, for I know my sin, for my sins are always before me. Yet you are proved right when you judge. You are right in your verdict. So when you know who God is, you can afford to run to him. No matter what you are going through. Never be discouraged by those around you. Remember Bartimaeus. As he cried to the Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. He was discouraged by many. Hey, don't shout. But he shouted the more. Never listen to those around you. But run to God. No matter what you are going through. Let me read Mark 10 from verse 46. Don't mind what is around you. For Bartimaeus, I um, can imagine, the mob that was around the Lord were making a lot of noise, yet he shouted the mob, knowing that Jesus Christ, he will always hear you, no matter where you are. No matter what you are going through, he will always listen. For those who are persistent in prayer are always heard. For persistent prayer can only be from those who believe. Those who are committed to the will of God. They will never give up. No matter the circumstances, they will continue in prayer. No matter what you are going through, you must persevere. She must be willing to endure. For endurance is for those who know that they were called to be soldiers. 
For a soldier never gives up on account of hardships, on account of challenges. The reason why they are called soldiers, it is because they have to go through challenges with endurance. They must face challenges, even unto death, even to give up their very lives, defending their cause. We must be willing to to lose our lives in this world in order for us to run the race well with the Lord. Remember the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were not discouraged on account of the fire, the blazing furnace. They were not discouraged, but they remained strong in the faith, looking to the Lord despite the threat over their lives. Let's read that book of Daniel 3. Read from verse 1 to the end so that you can contextualize. For when we know who God is, and when we know that God is more than able to do exceeding abundantly above that which you ask or think of, according to the power that works within us, we will never despair. We will never be discouraged. Even, not even by account of sin. When you sin, run to Jesus, but never be a habitual sinner, lest you be hardened. For men will say, I'll sin. When you sin intentionally, then there's no more sacrifice for you. Now read Hebrews 10 from verse 25, uh, from verse 26. Those who sin intentionally, there's, more, there's no more sacrifice for them. But when you sin not intentionally, you know, those who sin intentionally, often their habit is that of sinning. There's no longer any sacrifice for such. We must be willing to go to move on, to march on. No matter the circumstances, always be still and see the deliverance that the Lord will bring to you. For those who follow God wholeheartedly are never discouraged. This is the reason why the Lord said to Joshua, meditate on this book day and night. This book of the law, meditate on it and confess it day and night. Be strong and be courageous. Don't be afraid. That's what the Lord says. Those who follow God, who follow Jesus Christ wholeheartedly, are those who are always courageous to face their circumstances. He says, then you'll be successful in all that you do if you are careful to obey all what the word says. Only those who have hidden the word in their hearts can do what it says, can be careful to do what the word says. Not Joshua 1 from verse 5. Such are those who are not discouraged on account of circumstances. Even as we are told, never to call conspiracy that which the world calls conspiracy. Never to fear what they fear, but to fear he who is holy, and only God is holy. Okay, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 8. You know, technology has done it again. He's saying it can't. Okay. Ah. Okay. But that's what he says, what I said. Eh? 
says we must not live in the way of the world. It says, don't call what? Conspiracy. What they call what? Conspiracy. Don't fear what they fear. But you must fear he who is holy. And only God is holy. That's what it says. Eh? Fear it from verse 11. Isaiah 8. So when you, have, you fear God and God alone, you will not be mindful of the worldly things. You will not fear what is in the world. And if you cannot fear that which is of the world, you will never put trust in them. For you can only put your trust in that which you fear. Fear God and trust him with all your heart. When you fear that which is of the world, it means you trust that which is of the world. You can only trust that which you fear, that which you reverence. If you fear God, you'll trust him with all your heart. If you fear that of the world, you'll trust it with all your heart. For when you trust Satan in his destructive power, it means that is the one that you fear. When you fear him because of his destructive power, it means you have put your trust in his destructive power. When you look to God, you will never be discouraged on account of worldly things. For remember, even your very family will talk against you. They'll talk ill against you, but never lose heart. Remember, that's what the Lord says. When Jeremiah approached the Lord and said, Lord, you know these people of the world, you've planted them, but they, they are always successful. But as for me, you know my thoughts, you are always in my thoughts, yet trouble everywhere. But the Lord says, if you have run with men and they've worried you, how much more if you run with horses. If you have run in the plains, how much more if you go through the thickets of the Jordan? It says, see, even your very family, they are talking against you. They are scheming against you. You know, if you read that book of uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 12, read from verse 1. So when you've come to know who God is, you will not despair on account of challenges or what men do. For David says, God does good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. He says, my feet almost slipped. I almost lost my foothold when I envied the wicked. For I saw them, they were kept free. They were never, you know, those who cared, they cared less for the troubles of this world are never on the wicked. It says, I almost lost my foothold. Okay, let's go to Psalms. It can again. Read Psalms 73 from verse 1. So, what is the Lord telling us? Never to be envious of the wicked. Never be discouraged on account of the wicked. Those of the world. Look to God and never be discouraged. No matter what you are going through, no matter where you are coming from, never allow it to discourage you. You may see yourself 
is the worst sinner. Let me tell you something. Paul says he was one of the worst sinners. Yet God, God chose him. Not because of what he did, but because of his mercy. So that he could preach the gospel unto many. Being the worst sinner that he was, yet God chose him. Let me read 1 Timothy 1 from verse 12. He was chosen by God. Even we who are of the Lord, we were chosen by God. Not because of what we did. Not because of our own good works. It was by grace. For by grace we are saved. When you know that, that will encourage you to approach God's throne of grace. So that you may find mercy and receive that you may find grace and receive mercy in your time of need. You will not be discouraged. You, no matter what you may have done, for God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him will never perish, but will have, will have what? everlasting life. And if you read John 3 from verse 16, this is the reason why he says, go and know this. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. Say, go and search what this means. I desire mercy and, sacrifice, and, and, and not sacrifice. Says, for it is not the healthy who, want a do who need a doctor, but those who are sick. And so the Lord came, not for those who are believers, those who are righteous, but for the unrighteous. And if you read Matthew 9 from verse 12. So when you have come to know that to be an absolute truth, you can afford to say to yourself, much on my soul, be strong. No matter what you may find yourself in, you may lack food, don't cry. Don't cry as the world cries. But it's only a cry of faith that God hears. It is only a cry of faith that God hears. And a cry of faith must be born out of a heart that is content. For when you are content with whatever you have, you will give glory to God. No matter what you may be going through, you will give him glory. You will thank God. No matter your circumstances. You will never be discouraged. On account of circumstances. Whether. You are in lack. Yet in Christ you have got everything. The challenge is. You want to believe when you see. That is where the greatest challenge is. Many would want to believe only when they see. Only when you see. But the Lord is saying, be strong and be very courageous to face the giants of the land. Be strong and be very courageous to face every situation. Be strong and be very courageous. For it is not strength in the physical that counts but it is being strong in the Lord standing firm in faith unless you be one who stands firm in faith you are not strong in the Lord only those who stand firm in faith are immovable no matter the circumstances no matter what you are going through, you will never be swayed by every wind of doctrine. When you hear, eh, there's somewhere where they are giving money by prophets, you run. There's somewhere where they are giving children by prophets, you run. The greatest prophetic word is the word of God. That points you to your salvation. Not that which takes you away from the Lord. That causes you to be a slave of your evil desires. For many have been made 
slaves of their passions by those who cause evil desires to be stimulated in their hearts. You know, the cravings of the flesh. For when you are told you are going to have a car, that craving is awakened. You now look forward not to a relationship with God, but you look forward to a car. You look forward to that which you have been what? Told. If it were so, surely we'll just be going through models of cars in the Bible. Every scripture will be filled with house numbers in the mansion that you need. But all is in the word. Seek to know God by knowing him through his word and by his spirit. His word is all that you need. So that all other things may follow. When you know who he is, no matter the circumstances, you will march on. You will not be afraid on account of circumstances. You know, like the children of Israel. This thing is uh, misbehaving. You know, the children of Israel, they were marching boldly towards the promised land until they saw the Egyptians pursuing them. And then, you know what happened? They started to cry. Were there no graves in Egypt that you took us to die in, in this wilderness, in the desert? They grumbled, they murmured against God and against Moses. But Moses says, do not be afraid. Be still and see the deliverance that the Lord will bring, bring you today. Only be strong. Only what? Be strong. You know, if you read that book of Exodus 14 from verse 1. Say the Egyptians that you see today, you'll see them no more. Your situation, you will not see it anymore. Only when you stand in faith. For when you stand in faith, you see only God. You are conscious of only God and not your circumstances. You are conscious of only God. Eh? What, what do you want? Ah, tattoo farm, tattoo. <laughs> you see only who? God. Okay, you can give me that one if you want me to hold it if you want. Okay, let's go to that uh, book of uh, Exodus. I want to read from verse 8. He says, the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out, marching out what? Boldly. Have you ever been bold yourself? Eh? Until that which you feared appeared. And the boldness just go. Eh? He says, the Egyptians all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops pursued the Israelites and, and overtook them as they camped by the sea near P. Hairoth, opposite Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and they were, they were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought, brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us save the Egyptians? If it would have been better for us to save the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you'll see the deliverance. The Lord will bring to you today. The Egyptians you see today, you'll never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. 
you need only one. The stillness is not about, he was not saying, don't move. Because others will say, still, I'm still. He is talking of stillness of heart. That's why Psalms, you know, 46, where he says, be still and know that I'm what? I'm Lord. Be still and know that I am Lord. Only those who have got stillness of heart, whose hearts are pure, you have come to know who God is. When you know who God is, you believe in his power of deliverance, in his power of healing, in his power of serving, you will not be seen jumping from one to the other. You know, like many, you know, like many who have become, uh, you know, you know, there's uh, window shopping. There's also church shopping. You know, church shopping? Huh? From this one, it's a, uh, I was waiting to hear this, to prophesy about my marriage. Then you go to the other one. You know, and most of these are, you know, they are Sangomas, you know? You know, they are Sangomas. <laughs> and their prophets always about what? Evil, evil. That pursues you. And not to admonish you to follow the right path. It's always about, ha, the owner, neighbor, when you, you know, and <laughs> so I've seen your neighbor. He's a witch. That, that's all they, you know, that's all that they talk about. Or they tell you, hey, I've seen you. You know, you were fishing and get, you were getting a lot of fish. That's money. <laughs> eh? That's all they tell you. And you believe them. And if you see that, ah. But what they say is not coming. You hope to the other one again. Church shopping. Tell me about church shopping. Others, they go on window shopping, but others, church, church shopping, you know. You must follow the truth, the word of truth. That's what you need. For by his word, we are built up. Not by anything else. By his word, we are able to stand firm. For it is only by the word that, that faith comes. By the word. We are built not by anything else, but by his word. By his word. For when we receive the word, we believe and we have faith in the Lord. And when we have faith, we can move mountains. Meaning, it is only by his word that you can move what? Mountains. For faith comes by hearing. Hearing the message about Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Not hearing about the world. Money, possessions. Like many are always looking for. Many are looking for possessions. They are slaves of their passions. When you become a slave of your passions, they drag you. They drag you away from the Lord. Why? Because that's what you desire. For the evil desires in you would have been awakened. May God bless you. May bless his word. I can you just stand up and... Um, I say, march on, on, my soul. Be strong. Be, strong. Be, not Be not discouraged. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with, you. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with now, you now you devil. Enough is enough. enough, is enough. You, demons. you demons. Enough is enough. enough, is enough. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. Say out right now. Come out. Come out. You evil spirits. Where are you hiding? Enough is enough. My body is not your temple. Say out. 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 Out of my life. 
Now shake, 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 shake every demon. Say, out of my life. You take shopping. Spirit of take shopping out of my life. You are the progress out of my life. Say, out. Out. Out of my life. You take joy of spirit. Out of my life. Out of my life. In Jesus' name we pray.